Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to make a velocity time graph when you're given a position time graph. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we first need to recall um, the graphical definition of an instantaneous velocity. So we just have to remember that the slope of a tangent line of a position versus time graph at a given point in time uh, gives you the instantaneous velocity at that point in time. So what I mean here is if I look at my left graph here, my left position time graph, and I take a look at the tangent line at this point in time where I'm drawing my dotted line, and I draw a tangent line uh, for the red curve here, my tangent line's in blue, if I find the slope of this blue line, that gives us the instantaneous velocity. That slope is the instantaneous velocity. Now, um, one thing that we can notice for this set of data is if we take the instantaneous velocity later on, so notice here that I've moved my time to the right, so we're looking at a later time. We've noticed that the blue line, my tangent line, has gotten steeper. Now, both are positive, so we can tell that it's traveling in the forward direction. But at this later time here, it's just traveling faster because it's much steeper compared to the tangent line from before. And I've got my tangent line. Let me move that, and there we go. And that's my tangent line for the last point in time. So we think, okay, let's describe this tangent line first. What kind of slope does it have? Well, first it's positive. It's got a positive slope, and it's very steep. So the way you want to think about this is, do I draw it above the time axis or below? Now, since it's a positive slope, we're going to draw it above. And since it's very steep, I want to draw it further away from the time axis. So as a result, I'm going to draw my velocity versus time graph connecting these. And there we have it, a velocity versus time graph for this position versus time graph. As you can see, we can tell a few things about this object now. We can tell that since it's in the positive region that it's moving forward, and also we can tell that since its velocity is increasing, right, um, that it's speeding up. So we have that it's speeding up while moving in the forward direction. Okay, so next up, I've got a position versus time graph that looks like this. And we're going to go a little bit faster on these ones. I've got a position versus time graph. I want to look at the tangent line when the velocity 
or sorry, when the time is zero, we're going to draw the tangent line that goes with this. I'm gonna move it here. That looks good. And I've also got a tangent line at the end. Looks like this. So um, first off, I'm going to draw a point that goes with the... All right, so first off, uh, we want to make a velocity time graph using these two tangent lines, okay? So first, I think we're at the point where we should be comfortable drawing a tangent line uh, at the beginning of an object's motion, at the end of an object's motion. So let's talk about this tangent line here. Well, first, it's... Um, it's pretty steep and it's also positive. So those two things need to tell us where to draw our, our first uh, point. Okay, so initially at the time of zero, that means that our first point should be further away from the time axis because it's so steep. And that also it's in the positive region, so above the time axis, because it's positive, it's got a positive slope, okay? Um, looking at the last tangent line here, we wanna note its traits. Well, first off, it's not positive, it's not negative either, it's zero. And that pretty much tells us everything we need to know we know that it's coming to a rest. So in order to get the velocity versus time graph that corresponds with this position time graph, we would just connect the, the dots here. So based on this, what can we tell about its motion? Well, we can tell that it's moving forward because it's in the positive region, right? So it's forward. What can we also tell about what it's doing. Well, we can also tell that its velocity is decreasing because we start with some very positive velocity and we end up with a velocity of zero here. So we know it's slowing down. Okay, I'm just gonna walk you through a third example. Here we've got a position time graph that goes like this. We've got a downwards opening parabola. So first off, we're going to draw a tangent line for the beginning. I think I like doing this by hand at this point. Um, and then we're going to do a tangent line at the end. Looks like this. And we're going to take this time to describe these two lines. So first off, this one is uh, slope of zero. So I'm going to draw a dot that goes with zero here. So my first velocity at the time of zero happens here because the slope is zero. Okay. Um, now we have to also compare with the, with the tangent line at the end. So we see that the tangent line is negative and it's very steep. So because it's negative, I know it's somewhere in this region, not up here. It has to be below the time axis. So here we've got a point that's very negative and very steep. So I want to drop further away. So what I want to do is then connect these dots and I find it's always easy to describe it after drawing the velocity versus time graph. So based on what we have here, we know that it's speeding up because its velocity is increasing. Now don't get this mixed up with math because I understand that in math, sometimes you call it a decreasing function, but the fact of the matter is if we assign some numbers here, let's say I put zero here and then I put negative five here, then it would be clear that it is speeding up. 
okay? So I understand that the line is going downwards, but know that the object is speeding up. And in which direction is it traveling? It's traveling in the backwards direction. Or the negative direction, or left, or south, or, or west. Okay? So that all works. Okay, so try this one on your own. Pause this video and s try to guess what you think the velocity versus time graph for this shape, this graph, would look like. Okay, so if you th gave this a shot, your tangent, your tangent line should look something like this. Tangent line like this to start, and then we're going to end with a tangent line that looks like this. Okay, so let's take a look at our first tangent line here. We know it's steep, we know it's negative. So we're going to go with a negative number that's very far from the zero axis or the time axis, okay? And we need a second point. The second point goes here. And we notice that a horizontal line has a slope of zero, which means I'm gonna put a dot here and I'm going to connect them here. Okay, so we always want to make sure we describe this object's motion. And it looks like this object is moving in the negative direction, right? Because it's in the negative quadrant. So it's moving backwards. And we've also got its velocity is decreasing because it's approaching a velocity of zero here. Okay, so it's slowing down. Okay, um, in my opinion, these types of problems are some of the hardest that we'll encounter in this class in terms of diagrams and graphs, okay? But if you practice these, uh, you should be in a really good shape in such a way where you don't have to memorize these and you can kind of fend for yourself. So rewatch this video, make sure you come in with questions, and uh, we'll talk more about this in class. Bye.